Hey, y'all, we wanted to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. Preacher's Hour needs your support. In order to make more and better content, we need you, yes, you listening to this right now, to become a patron. Choose the tier that best fits your preferences and help us make theology for our context. Thanks and enjoy this episode. All right, welcome back. Preacher's Hour, this is episode two for September in our series on Christian dating. Hopefully you enjoyed the first part. We had a good time. Caden was dropping gems on Man, gems. I, I'm ready to look, go home. Like yeah. I don't even need to be here. When his dissertation you. comes out, I can't wait. To <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, hopefully it was helpful, um, not offensive or anything. This episode might be. I apologize in advance, but no. Um, but honestly, I think I think this is equally as important is what not to do. I think we talked a good amount about what how it should look and how it can look um, as far as like mentorship and community. I, I definitely think that we should have, if you're a young couple, mm-hmm. and we when we get to our marriage episodes, I mean, we're going to talk about that as well, but you need some older brothers and sisters kind of walking with you to to give you that advice to kind of say, hey, um, this is getting kind of a little, you may want to look in this area, yeah, reevaluate yeah. some things. Um, and you do need a community of people to support your relationship. Because um, I've been in a situation where you're dating kind of just you two by yourself. And, yeah, it can get bad quick if you don't have people around. Even just people to hang out with as a couple. Um, one thing I love about your group, there's a bunch of them. They all hang out together. Um, and there's there's some people who are single, some people who are couples. I feel like you guys do a really good job of supporting each other. Um, the men help the men, women help the women. I think I think you guys are set up for success for yeah, sure. Yeah. So this episode is gonna be about how we should not go about Christian dating. What are the the don'ts of Christian dating? What do you guys? What would you start off with? Oh man, my mind goes. I mean, <laughs> I can tell you all the wrong things we're doing from my own experience. Yeah, is what I could same. honestly say. And I think that's the, hopefully the heart you hear behind it too. A lot of it's not honestly just simply like people were judging the stories we no, heard. We some there. of it's the only stuff like we've been through, and yeah. we're just like, dang. Like if I go back and tell my younger self, you were a knucklehead and changed this little Boy, thing, man, man you would have saved yourself a lot mm-hmm. of headaches and tears and all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think. I don't know. I, I don't know if this is, is I think right here, as opposed to answering that question right away, mm-hmm. I think like Go what ahead. comes to my mind right away is kind of like the idea of defining even like, what do we mean when we say, uh, like creating boundaries, what exactly yeah, are boundaries? Yeah. Right. But also at the same time, what is like, again, we, we define in the first episode, like kind of like in a sense, what Christian dating is, mm-hmm. but like, what do we actually mean when we say that? Like, how do you, how do you define Great. Uh, we what didn't actually Christian, do that. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? We kind of give some like nuance. We kind of threw yeah. some stuff here and there, but I don't, I don't think we clearly define like, how would you define okay. Christian dating? So I don't know if you want to answer, but I have, I have <laughs> um, some stuff. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean just to answer kind of the idea of what is Christian dating to separate that between secular dating as Mm -hmm. like on the other side of the spectrum, Mm -hmm. I guess I really, honestly, we put this idea about Christian dating in like this bubble where it's like, this is this like untouched thing. That's so perfectly designed. Mm, Um, but I think like in most cases, the people, at least from what I understand, I mean, part of my, goal in life is to be a therapist and a part of that has to deal with relationships. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the information that I find gives me a better understanding perspective of what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. In most cases, I feel like secular and Christian relationships have begun more closely in terms of like what the negative parts are. So like there's less distinction between what is a Christian relationship and a secular relationship. I don't know if that was kind of what you were. No, I mean, that is, that is something I didn't think about. I think there's not enough of a distinction I think you can talk about that with the church in general. Right. I mm-hmm. think there's in a lot of ways we look too much like the world. We're not, as the technical term is, holy, but not that doesn't mean to be perfect. It means to be set different, apart. set apart, distinct. Um, I guess Christian dating versus secular dating is like two individuals who are individually committed to Jesus, want to follow him, want to get discipled. And they decide to pursue a romantic relationship, right? Um, now, as far as like the knots of Christian dating, 
I am a little cautious when marriage is brought up too quickly. Uh, expand, I guess. So it's like if it's like we ju- we're twenty years old, we're nineteen years old, mm-hmm. and, and this excludes some people who got married at that age. I said, or oh, seventeen, right? yeah. eighteen years yeah. old, yeah. right? But if, if we're really young, nothing wrong with getting married young. My wife was twenty one when she was married. I was twenty five. But if you're two very young people, mm-hmm. day one, we should we're, we're gonna get married one day. Like, pump the brakes. Now, obviously, intentional. Marriage is something that should be thought about. Like, mm-hmm. we're not, again, we're not just dating to date. We're not just, like, having a good time. We're not just hanging out casually. I don't know. But I think there's, there, again, there are two Christians, and they are, like, we feel attraction. There's physical attraction. I like you as a person. Um, I want to be more than friends with you. And, and the other person agrees. They have the same feelings. Okay, once we've established that, we now decide to enter into this thing called dating, Christian mm-hmm. dating. We're going to go on dates. <laughs> um, at, at some point, we may decide to become boyfriend and girlfriend. There are, I've heard, there are pastors who think that that's evil and bad and it shouldn't be boyfriend and girlfriend as a Christian. I'm, I don't know where you're getting that from. It's not in the Bible. Preference, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you're just making up <laughs> stuff at that point. Um, but... Yeah, I guess that is different than okay. the world usually does it, which is just like, I think you're attractive. S- sex might come <laughs> before that. Mm-hmm. Um, or at the very least, it's like, we're just kind of hanging out. I don't want to put labels on it. We're not going to commit. Yeah. And we've been doing this for three, four, five, six years. And it's like, maybe we should. Oh, we had a kid. I don't know. I'm being a little judgmental there. But <laughs> there's less intentionality. They're, they're kind of just yeah. allowing it to happen. Just kind of going with the flow. Versus like directing, making intentional decisions with what they're doing. I guess that, yeah, Yeah. hopefully that answers it. Yeah, I think this was the main thing that I had thought about, like, because you were talking and I thought about kind of just what I was going to go with what the points Mm -hmm. I'd made. I think the biggest thing that I I would say about what to not do is to avoid the negative aspects of relationships. So basically Mm -hmm. what I'm saying is like, in most cases with relationships, you only think about the positive things. You only think about what you're expecting for. You're only expecting the positive mm-hmm. outcomes and you mm-hmm. rarely like we rarely talk about the negative parts of it. Right. I think the biggest thing is being aware of like the fact that it's not always like, gonna it's be. not roses and gold. Right, like it's like right. it's not this like perfect picture in reality that at least from what my generation I've understood mm-hmm. has this been influenced by the culture around That's us right. is that it's this perfect thing that works all the time. And it, it's like almost, it's like, it should be easy as breathing is yeah. the, is the here is the words I hear. Like, like relationships are th- like, they're this figment of reality where it's like everything works perfectly and it's always mm-hmm. in a perfect design and it's always, which sounds kind of counterintuitive considering that it's a secular like perception, mm-hmm. but That's it's like true. this, it's, I don't know if that makes sense, no, but like this idea that like relationships are, you aren't only think of hard. the positive part. Yeah. yeah. And they're not hard. Yeah. 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 I think, I would agree if if I'm going in thinking that it's supposed to be easy and perfect and no issues, no conflict, then I'm setting myself up for disaster. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I don't want to go in <laughs> just expecting the worst. Yeah, it's um, not healthy either. And yeah. we just fight every single day and there's just nothing but conflict and it's toxic and we can define that word. It's a very mm-hmm. hyper used word, but it's valid um but i i agree i think a christian perspective to life should include an understanding that life is not always going to be easy right you know what i'm saying so i think that's very yeah good point i think yeah just in general because i had thought about i'm taking a class with brian ross right now i know that you guys are familiar with with brian ross um one of the things that made me think about it was at least for this specific conversation is that um, he had brought up with something during our class about how like the worst types of societies are the ones that don't acknowledge death. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you remember that quote. Yep. I do. I do. But it made me think, I know that's a kind of a workaround. I know it kind of, you have to get there to think about it. But like for me, so good. when I heard that, I thought, well, we live in a reality or at least in a, a Western society mm-hmm. that pushes this idea of like only the good parts of a relationship. And because of that, they only ever like, 
this the, it's what I see it as the consumerization of like relationships where it's yeah. like it's only the good parts of it. You only want to be a part of a relationship for yeah. the good parts. And if it's not good, you discard it and right. find another one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the consumer aspect. Yeah. There. And I think that's what most people in my generation get kind of that where they kind of get stopped at the door about mm-hmm. it because they're like oh well it's supposed to be all these easy things and yep. it's supposed to work out perfectly and then in some cases with at least christian relationships they don't realize that that is in the same kind of context where it's like mm-hmm. i should be able to work with this person and i should be able to be in a good relationship with this person because they're christian so obviously Ooh. they <laughs> i don't know yeah. if that makes sense no, but I mean, that that last thing i didn't <laughs> think about that as well is Another thing is to think that because we're both Christian and we're both individually pursuing God, that that's all that matters. And I've 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 heard and I've seen couples who are just like, I don't know why this isn't working because we're both Christian. Mm -hmm. But if that's the only thing you have in common, like compatibility and attraction are still they're important, important. Yeah. And I feel like. I've I've been in context where that has been like downplayed. Like, no, no, no. Nope. He's a Christian. You're a Christian. Just pursue it. This is what God wants. And it's like and the person is busted. Yeah. <laughs> or it's like it's like <laughs> dang, bro. I wasn't gonna go there, John. <laughs> Maybe they don't look as attractive to you. Sorry, that's <laughs> true. But it's like you guys have nothing in common. You're completely different. The first like relationship my brother had in college, I think. Uh, nope, it was his second relationship in college. This girl, she was very sweet. Really liked her a lot. And they were together for years. Nothing in common. Like, literally, the only thing they had in common was that they, they thought each other was attractive. And that was pretty much it. That was it. There was no... Mm-hmm. They didn't like the same music, the same movies, show, like, nothing in common. Mm-hmm. And I've heard... Again, I've heard christian context older people be like that's not a big deal as long as you got jesus that's all you need and it's like well no that's just not true so again what not to do is to think that compatibility and attraction don't matter Mm -hmm. they're not everything right there's other contexts where it's like this person's not attractive okay but they're a great person they're awesome you have a lot in common you enjoy each other's company they both you, you both love jesus yeah and that's usually can work when the guy is not as attractive in the Jeez. this is one of the reasons why I'm glad I had sons. I think my boys are, are cute as can be, but if they weren't cute, I would still have hope for them because you could still you can nope. be an ugly dude. Nope. Nope. <laughs> you, uh, I'll let you run this you out. My wife talk about hey, this all the time. Speak on yourself. Go yeah. You can be You're an ugly on your own dude. soapbox. That's fine. <laughs> you can be an ugly dude and there's still hope for you. And I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> Okay. Well, this is it for Preacher's <laughs> Hour. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, this will be my last official episode. Um, <laughs> you can follow me at... No. no I, I hear you just talking saying. about being busted uh, earlier, but I get in trouble for that. I didn't no. say... Ju- <laughs> That's uh, kind of all out. General it's busted. Yeah. <laughs> Edit that out. I'm just thinking no, about it. So, so, <laughs> so I, I do have a question as you guys are sitting here talking, yeah, though, yeah, because yeah. I think maybe a lot of people have this kind of question. It's in the same room of, <clears throat> like... How, like, is there a wrong way? So if I am attracted to another person, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's, uh, we go to the same church and right. then like we're around this lot of same spaces, gotten to know them a little bit. Like, is there a wrong way for me to be able to like <laughs> tell them about pursue that? Them. To yeah. pursue them? Like, does it need to be the guy, the girl kind of thing? See. Does it need okay. to be like that? That's like, good like, like, how do I go about that kind of thing? Cause I imagine a lot of people are probably maybe even in that kind of yeah. space of and like, I'm, is there a wrong way to go about that? Too? I'm sure. Number one, there are people who have like very confident answers to that question. Right? Sure. Like, it's always gotta be X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm less inclined to lean that way to tell you like this is exactly what you should do every time. Um, I do think there are multiple ways. Multiple you gotta know your context. I had a conversation with someone recently, and I told this person. They told me they're interested in someone. I mm-hmm. want to date this person. I, I like them, and I my first thing was like make sure there is at least a chance that they like you back. <laughs> That's <some> good advice. <laughs> like. Like make sure that make sure they're single. That was number one thing I said, told this person. Are they dating someone already? <laughs> the answer is yes. Leave it alone. Sorry, it's over. It's off limits. Stay out of it. Um, and this is this part I'm about to say is kind of my own personal opinion. I'm going to say that. Sure. Is that 
if you have romantic feelings for someone that you are not dating and you're like, oh, but we can just be friends. You're not actually friends because you want to be more than friends. Okay. So your relationship to this person, if it's just friendship and you don't tell them, it's based on a lie. If that makes sense. So it's like if you like someone and I, this is, I'm speaking from experience. I've done this many times where mm-hmm. I, I was friend zone. I like this girl. And they did not like me back, or I just I didn't get that vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm just gonna keep being friends with them. I'm being fake the whole time mm. because like, oh, we're just friends. But I don't want to just be friends. So right off the bat, our our friendship is not legit. It's not real. Now, should I cut the friendship off? I don't know. I think feelings should be expressed at some point. Okay. Like the worst that can happen is they like, I don't feel the same way. Well, at least I got it out there. Yeah. So to answer your question, mm. if there's feelings, again, try to figure out, number one, is the person single? Mm-hmm. Number two, do they like you back? It's mutual. Yeah. <laughs> is there some mutual interest? If, they're, if there's just zero chance they are not into you, right, then maybe <laughs> don't go after. I don't know. But I always say, again, if we're both Christian – and we're hanging out in the same spaces. We probably have the same friends. Like, there's definitely a risk in expressing feelings. That's For just sure. a guarantee. For sure. But I guess I lean more to the side, especially as I've gotten older. What's the worst that could happen if you tell them, hey, like like Shalom told you, hey, I, I like you. Right. Like, put it on the table. <laughs> right. Put it out there. Like, if you don't feel the same way, cool. Like, that's fine. I just wanted you to know. Like, that's, that's my advice to someone in that situation. Right. Now, um... Does it have to be the guy every time? I'm not gonna say yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I disagree. I don't. I don't. Yeah. That's just the, the sexual revolution, and, and I don't. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters who who says what first. Personally, so know. sis, this is your shot. This is what we basically Shoot saying. Shoot your shot. Shoot your shot. Yes. You miss all the shots you don't but take. But be prepared for the consequences. <laughs> That's yeah. The other thing. So let's, let's yeah. be honest about that. Because the thing is, I, <laughs> we work with, we have a lot of young adults at our church. Tons of you young people. And I know a lot of other young adult ministry that goes beyond our church too, by the yeah. way. So let me make that clear. Big facts. And I often have had so many conversations. It's like the person shot their, sh- or shot their shot. That's mm-hmm. weird to say. That's right. And then it was like, yeah. oh, it wasn't mutual. Yeah. Now it's like, I got to go to a whole different <laughs> church. <laughs> this happens all the very good point. time right very good point so i think you're you're right in there what you were saying you have to also be honest about okay if this doesn't go yes. the way actually am i about to break up an entire friend yeah. group but but yeah <laughs> but then also maybe am i mature enough to be able That's to handle thing. this handle the right the, way the no yeah because i don't think necessarily it needs to lead with you going yeah, to a whole yep. different church. Lead a church well the spirit of god told me i got to yeah. go somewhere else Make it spiritual <laughs> like oh, god, god told me god's to. telling me to leave this church. by the way <laughs> okay, yes, maybe God might tell some of y'all to like go pursue someone. I ain't I ain't I ain't We're getting to that. Oh, okay. We're going to get to that. Okay, I'll be I quiet. Absolutely then. God told me you're my wife. Get that nonsense. Okay, out go ahead. Here. Anyway, I don't know where we were going. What was I saying? Yeah, I'm here throwing yeah. you. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm like dancing between landmines right now. Um <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot out there. Yeah. Um well, I feel like you're going to probably talk a lot about it, but I think if we could go into that, uh, what, if it's going to go, go into your question, yeah. I think what you were saying from my perspective, I think as somebody who's been around like the people in my generation mm-hmm. who are pursuing relationships and people who are pursuing other people, I think the biggest thing that I've noticed is that a lot of the culture influences that. So I think a lot of what our culture in, is now, like with social media and mm-hmm. everything else that comes with it, there's this like, I've, I've, I've coined, I'm not coining the term, but it's like this active dissociation to reality where okay. they think that right. you, you might be coining it, but go yeah, ahead. I'm not going to coin it, but I, I think true. when I think about it from like a psychological perspective, because mm-hmm. I get very, I get too intellectual sometimes with That's things. Okay. So stop me if I'm You're going, I'm going nerd. off on a branch, but, but like I'm a half nerd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a full nerd. I got glasses. That's about it. That's anyway, go ahead. But yeah, I think like a lot of what I see in the people around me and my, in my generation because of all the things that influence like their perception of how to pursue relationships, courting, dating, whatever it is, like the biggest thing is I think that people get like they caught up into this reality 
that they see around them. Like a lot with social media is like, it's so easy to access a relationship. Like you guys were talking about like this 1% type of personality, the red pill, whatever it is. Like this reality where you think that, oh, other people are doing it and that's how they get relationships. So it must be something I should do. And that's Mm -hmm. the way I should be able to get relationships. And I think a lot of like Christian relationships, at least for young people have been influenced by that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, kind of when you were talking about people being broken, like when I was thinking about was this idea that we were talking about it at young adults this last weekend, um, Cam had brought up this idea of what do you think that, uh, pieces. And mm. I think a, the big thing that from my, this is my personal opinion, but comes from this idea of contentment, yep. um, Holding. which mm-hmm. in most cases people hear contentment. And I remember saying, I don't think if it's that big of a deal, but like, I, I always think that contentment is like the enemy of capitalism in the sense that, Contentment is this like idea that it's separate from satisfaction. Satisfaction is a much more like Western perception of what we think our reality is, Mm. where contentment is like the actual reality Mm. of it. And I think in most cases, I don't know if this is the case. I could be wrong as somebody who's (laughs) 23 and, and currently in a relationship. But I think in most cases, people get caught up in the satisfaction of who they want to be with and what relationship they want to be with. And then they don't realize the reality of the situation is. And I think in most cases you shouldn't be in a relationship to try and be satisfied, but mm. learn how to like be content with the reality that God has blessed you with. Cause I think in my context, the first three months of my relationship with Shalom were not good. Like even mm. coming from somebody who is, who is a, PK, a pastor's chill, like kid who comes from that world of, of Christianity, understands what a relationship is supposed Mm -hmm. to be like, understands what a marriage is supposed to be like. And then me who grew up in the church, but didn't really start pursuing God until probably like high school. Mm -hmm. Like we thought because we were in this reality of this is a person who is also Mm -hmm. after Jesus, Mm -hmm. it should be simple. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we had a lot of realities thinking like at least my own personal problems that I was dealing with, like pornography, addiction, Mm -hmm. uh, reality of like what women want, what men want. Like as somebody who was 19 going into that relationship, I thought this is the way I should be pursuing relationships. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. after a while I realized maybe there's more to it. (laughs) Maybe there's a better way of doing it. So I always tell people at least as a word of like warning is that Mm -hmm you shouldn't pursue a relationship that's based off of like what the culture tells you to pursue it off of. Mm, You shouldn't do it because of what you'll be satisfied with. Cause I think most people I've talked to a lot of people who are either single or in relationships Mm -hmm. who say as like being in a relationship is so much harder now because you're forced into this reality where you want to pick and choose what you want. And I know that in most cases people feel like that they are given this option of being able to, get whatever they want out of a relationship. Mm -hmm. So if they don't like it, like you had said before, they can just go to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, a person can be 85% exactly what you need and what God has given you. And the thing that you don't like about it or the thing you don't like about them Mm -hmm. might be the thing that God is trying to mold you you into. I mean, it's the the (laughs) 80-20 principle, man. Classic (laughs) 80-20 principle. I never heard it applied to relationships. (laughs) Really? No. That's the only place I've heard it apply. Really? You know what I'm talking about? So it's like hundred percent, yeah. yeah. It's a leadership so it's like, is what it is. Yeah, but okay, so, yeah. But yeah. it's like my if your spouse has eighty percent of what you're looking for, that's probably the max that you will find. By the way, you're it's never gonna find someone who has a hundred percent of what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. That they're they don't exist, yeah. right? Right. So, but they they probably can get to about eighty, and it's very easy, especially after years of being together, to focus on the twenty that they don't have. Yeah. Right. And then you see someone out there who has the twenty, and you're like, oh, I'm about to go get that. And you throw away your 80 and you give the 20, you realize like, oh, dang, like the 20 wasn't that great. 20 right. is shallow. Yeah, it's super. It's it's yeah, it's not enough. It's insecure. Right. Right. So it's like being content with my 80 and then the 20 that's not there. Like, how do I trust God? How do I trust that he's trying to mold me with this lack that's there, perceived yeah. lack? And vice versa. Like, I'm never going to be 100% of what my wife needs. I hope I can get to 80. Let me try yeah. to be the 80 that she wants. And then, like, that 20, that's not, that I'm not, that I ain't got. Yeah. Like, 
maybe try to work <laughs> yeah. hard to make up. For, you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, yeah. I, I think this is something I, I give advice to some people, and I got it from someone else. But I think um, we talk about like the Bible talks about like not creating false idols of God mm. and stuff like that. But I don't think I don't think we sometimes don't realize that I think our culture has become obsessed with creating these false idols of other individuals and who mm-hmm. they ought to be and who we desire people to be and all that kind of stuff in our minds. And then when we see the person sitting across us in reality who is made in God's image, who is beautifully, Amen. wonderfully made. Mm-hmm. And yet at the same time, doesn't fulfill all these all sort of, of the, qualifications yep. in our mind. We automatically say, ah, actually the real thing I don't desire. It's this fake image mm-hmm. that I've created within my own mind yeah. that I That's have a higher obsession actually mm-hmm. with yeah. Yeah. than this lived thing in reality with me. And I think is, I think we, as long as we're up here and, and it's, she doesn't meet that and she's not this side mm-hmm. or he's not this tall. Mm-hmm. I don't like short Kings, all this kind of stuff, right? Whatever short it is. Kings is great. Hey, Whatever it is, then yeah. automatically what we end up doing is we end up losing on the beautiful thing of yeah. life and the relationship that God gives us for this false reality. We're like we're living in VR world as opposed yeah, to the man. real thing. And 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 I've been in a in a situation where I the relationship, the idea of being in a relationship was what I wanted uh, more than the actual, actual relationship thing. I was in. I think that's what most of us most do. A lot people of people do is like you know, I want to be in a relationship. I don't want to be alone. So, like, yeah. I just the relationship becomes a thing I care about. Just in general, having one. The weather is changing. Yeah. I need someone to yeah. cuddle it's with. It's cute. Season, you know I need saying? to go ahead and take some pictures with someone. Right. Who am I going to kiss on New Year's? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not saying this. <laughs> Nonsense, bro. But yeah, I I, I think. What not to do. There's just so many areas we could go as yeah. far as like what not to do. Um, I, I I like everything that we've we've put on the table so far. I think going back to the whole mm-hmm. like count the cost. Yeah, there there has to be this this you have to be okay with what can happen. Like I've gotta be okay with rejection. Yeah. I think just in life <laughs> in general. Gonna let my you young down. folks, you gotta be okay with things not going your way. You gotta be okay yeah. with being told no. With I'm like this, I like you. I don't feel the same way. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> like, Which is hard. Like I, if I have, yeah, if I have resentment towards this person, well, you know what, you ugly anyway. I didn't even like it that much. You was, bro. Come no, on. you petty is what it's like, called. Come on, man. Like, like. Or like vice versa, the girl's like, "Oh well, you know, he was uh, short and ugly, and I like him." Like you was just liking him like two seconds ago. You need to stop. Yeah. But it's like okay, like I need to have. And I've I've said this to so many young people. I need to have enough respect for this person and their autonomy <laughs> to be like, okay, I'm not what you're looking for. Okay, like that's fine. Like yeah, yeah. We don't. If you can, we can still be friends. If you don't want to be friends, I'm cool with that. I'm not about to leave to a whole another church. We're just gonna <laughs> like. Yeah. Hopefully, we don't have to be weird. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. I took a big risk with putting this on the table. Yeah. That is just a fact, like you said. But it's like, if they don't feel the same way, like that's okay. Like, you can't make someone like you. And number one, number two, like, like I don't want somebody that doesn't want me. So that you did me a favor by telling me you don't like me back. Yeah. Cool. Now I can move on. Right. To somebody else who does like. You gotta look at it as, as a as a win win. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I think I think that was a lot of good stuff. I think the I think you had said something earlier, and I kind of wanted to push it a little bit against okay, it. Please. I know that that push might be a little back. bit, no, <laughs> but like back. I think in most cases, I feel like the culture around at least coming from the, you can get this from a person who's from the perspective yeah, of old, of so. Gen Z, push, Zillennial, push like. Back. I'm technically zillennial, but I'm also a part of the Gen Z. Right. Where, at least to give you guys cons- some kind of perspective, a lot of the people in my age are so focused about like this reality that we've put around society with phones, relationships, doing all these things at the right time. Like I know you guys had talked about a couple mm-hmm. episodes, like maybe two months ago, mm-hmm. about how like this generation is so focused on like trying to get all these things done at the same time, and they're always being stressed by these outside, the, these external factors. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing is is like at least what Brian Ross had made me think about is that we are gen- this generation, at least my generation mm-hmm. is so focused on the idea of seeing 
obstacles is like a hindrance to success where like as soon as something comes up or as soon as a roadblock mm-hmm. comes up it's like well this is thrown off my entire track and mm-hmm. i think that is a lot of a mentality that people at least at my age have with relationships resilience is one of the biggest lacks for your generation yeah and I, I mean I'm, I'm as a millennial as a full-blown millennial full-grown millennial <laughs> like <laughs> yes you can look back at each successive generation and resilience is the thing that's been decreasing yeah right it's true you can go to the greatest generation the ones who won world war ii obviously you won a freaking war war like you have a lot of resilience right you built a society you got the boomers who who they were the birth of that they still had a lot of resilience they had to build society you know you still uh, the previous ones got through the great depression all this type of stuff and with each successive generation gen x millennials okay like you're right i agree with you like we have this false idea that life is supposed to be i shouldn't have to get over or get through anything yeah right and i bring that with me into every relationship every yeah. situation i go yeah. into and i would agree your generation's probably the worst when it comes to like if there's any difficulty especially yeah. when i was teaching middle school and it's like nope too hard i'm out like you didn't even read half the the question yeah nope this is this is difficult any difficulty well, yeah, just not just not seeing it as missing. part of the process yeah it's part of how you grow. being rejected is okay because yeah. it's part of the process but yeah 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 i think i feel like i need to throw this caveat in there as a, i'm the pastor i'm the ahead, I'm pastor hat on pastor what we're not saying is be a weirdo okay <laughs> And then start now just shooting your shot at every single person. Amen. And now you become that person. Making people uncomfortable. Making people uncomfortable. That's not what we're saying anything no. all. Remember what Jeff is saying. You got to make sure that thing is mutual. Yes. Or anything else. So don't start just being like, oh, you cute, man. I already yes. like this. No, 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 no. I love God. Let's get together. <laughs> nah, you need to be, if you're, a, if you're a man, you need to learn how to actually be a gentleman. And mm-hmm. this is where I'm maybe going, you're going to sound like I'm a little more Go conservative ahead. in this way. Go you ahead. need to learn how to actually, what it means to be a gentleman. And if you're a woman, you also need to be, what is the, <laughs> what's the correct a term? A lady. A lady. Dang, that was hard to figure out. Um, to be an actual lady in that different way, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things too, I feel like I just want to come back and just make sure I make clear as well. Um, Though we should say the whole 80-20 rule and everything like that and being flexible and willing to meet people and that saying, hey, our expectations are never going to actually get met, we definitely should have standards of some sort, though, Mm -hmm. Mm 1,000%. Because I think that's a big, big issue where oftentimes we don't talk about anything about having any kind of standards Mm -hmm. or like in a sense like self-worth for ourselves. And because we're out of the desperation of Mm -hmm. wanting to fulfill the sense of loneliness or being in a relationship – we start now decreasing our standards, which I have done in certain yes. seasons. And to the point now, you with someone that you know you had no business Come with, on, but because they making your flesh and your skin feel a certain mm-hmm. type of way, now you're in a place where you're like, dang, how do I actually get out of this okay, right so I, away? You just opened the door for me. I got to tell this this is story. Go ahead. So the, the girl I was with before Selena, we were together for like maybe a month, not even that long. It felt much longer than that. So... Uh, yeah, I'd been single for maybe a year or two before I got with her. And I was on my like, yeah, you know, I'm a Christian. You know what I'm saying? I grew up in church. I'm a real Christian. I was not at all. Oh, one, one, at six kind of stuff. Huh? Okay. No, I hadn't even discovered. Oh, okay. Never been mind. even worse, bro. But <laughs> so, so I meet this girl through some friends and she was very cute. And it was so funny. We were in the talking phase. It's going okay. And you know, things are going good. And we, and we both get to a point where it's like, okay, we kind of want to see where this goes. And I, I remember saying, I have to, I have to say this. I am a Christian. And like, if you're not like this, we need to stop now. And she was like, oh yeah, I, I go to church. I was like, all right, bet we're in there. Let's do it. That's all. Go to church. All I mean, yep. Granted, I don't know when the last time she'd have been to the church. <laughs> this is not trying to downplay her, make her look bad in any way. But it's what you were saying. Like, I was lonely. I wanted a relationship so bad. I actually wanted to get married so bad. Marriage was a huge idol for me that I was willing to lower my standard Mm -hmm. just to, like, okay, I'm just going to compromise on all the things I believe that I I know are right, know are wise, and turn all that down and just try to force this and make it work. And it was 
not great for either of us. Yeah. Like, it, it was just, I wasn't great. She was doing what she could. I mean, she was sure, what sure. she had. But I'm just going to put I was not great. I was terrible. And just, like, unhappy and just, like, miserable and, like, man, like, this is not what I thought. Mm-hmm. It's I'm actually not being as Christian as I wanted to be. We never crossed the line or anything. But, sure. like, it was just not a good God-honoring relationship. And it ended. She broke up with me, did me a huge favor, did herself a huge favor, breaking up with trash me at the time. And I remember just being, like, broken and sad and lonely. And but then I realized, like, okay, like, this is what happens when you compromise. Mm-hmm. Like, if if... I had been a much more mature Christian and I would have like actually like before I even said anything, I would have just kind of like investigated and watched her and just kind of see how she moved and maybe ask some questions, but not trying to be all judgmental and just just observed a little bit more. Yeah, I would have seen, Okay, you know what? This is actually not for me. Yeah, it's not for either of us. Yeah. So I I, want to just echo what you're saying. I just want to like like don't be in a hurry. Yeah. Don't be no in a good hurry. decisions are made in a rush. Like right? rushing into a relationship. Pure feelings. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't rush it, bro. Take your time. Now obviously you don't just be we're talking forever. And then y'all forty five. Yeah, and then you we, how long you been talking? And oh, then because of common law now you technically because <laughs> you've been living in the same house, y'all technically. Oh yeah, you know, we got a house together, but we're just talking no, stop. Okay. <laughs> but like I'm gonna watch. I wanna wa- I wanna talk to people that, that know you like, hey, you know, what are they like? Asking questions. Just, I just want to see how are you with your with your family or with your like. Just the case. I gotta watch, observe. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's that's yeah. kind of my yeah. advice. Yeah. I mean, the first, I mean, the real first real like conversation that I had with Shalom in regards to that, I remember. She always says it like, but basically, before we were dating, technically, um, I had to drive. We were friends for like three months mm-hmm. so during that time i had to drive her she li- she's from originally uh la mm-hmm. uh, san fernando valley yep. and i had to drive her one time it was after a break but i had to go drive her from la all the way up to fresno Ooh. and at the time we were, good friends, friend. we were friends we were friends good hey I, right I may have stumbled but um <laughs> anyway uh i th- during that converse that drive i had probably what i would consider I wouldn't say it like it's like it was some form of attack, but I had asked her with a lot of questions that I felt like were important to mm. our relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm not preferencing you don't that by saying interrogate the person. This was my How approach. How many times do you go to church? <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite? Times yeah. you pray. Yeah. <laughs> this was <laughs> my approach. It did yeah. not work. It worked for me, but it does not yeah, work for everybody. Not universal. But that was a way for me to try and like kind of jump into the deep end of saying hey if we're going to be in a relationship mm-hmm. this is kind of things that i these are my no what are yeah. they what are they called my yeah my non-negotiables, non-negotiables. Non-negotiables. what do you think about and i'm i was serious like, i was like what do you think about abortion what do you think about certain people in the community and what what do you think about lgbt what do you think about this what do you think about this and i felt like i was telling god if she gives me some type of work around or move around or somebody like just like if she doesn't give me the answer that i'm assuming that somebody would give who is Christian mm. or something that I feel like I can accept if I would be married mm-hmm. to this person. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that I was thinking that at the but time, but if that's, like, that's, if that's yeah, something that, that I'm going to do, I want to see what her answer is. Yeah. And in most cases she gave me answers that they weren't the perfect answer, but they were an answer that mm-hmm. was perfect for me. So I think in that same aspect, that was also because we were friends for a long time. So I felt like she could trust me to say those things. That's, good. that's you also do it part on of day two. That's why I'm <laughs> saying like it doesn't work for everybody because right. I had a relationship with her before that. Right. I knew that I respected her as a friend before I respected her as a partner. So then when we were together, okay. I then respected her with both of those things. And I think that's the biggest thing that people see when people look at our relationship is that yeah. they don't really see that we're dating. I mean, obviously we are, but like in most cases, people see that we're friends first. Yep. And I think that's more, in my perspective, more important. But that's yeah, just me. That's, listen, man, that's <laughs> good stuff, bro. Yeah. You, yeah. Any final thoughts? Um, <clears throat> I mean, we could keep going down forever talking mm-hmm. about all the things that probably shouldn't be the right uh, reasons or intents or desires to want to try to uh, pursue someone and be in a relationship. Like, be honest with you, if you're just trying to get fulfillment because you're horny or something like that, Listen. you're going to be disappointed, man. You'll be disappointed, okay? 
And if it's for loneliness, like we talked about, mm. you're going to experience disappointment eventually. And you're going to hurt. Yes. You can't just think about what you're getting or not getting. Like, yep. If I'm not healthy, I got to think about, like, am I going to hurt? And I've hurt the other people I've been dating mm-hmm. because of my own brokenness. Yeah. And, and yeah. don't get me wrong, because, again, I think I don't want to I don't want to go to extremes. Mm-hmm. One of saying it's just about giving of yourself yeah, right. and forget about who you are right. and value and that stuff. Or it's the other extreme. It's, it's I just want me. everything. Yeah. Make mm-hmm. me feel good. Uh, I think it's it's got to figure out how to figure out a balance mm-hmm. in those two extremes. Where Facts. yes, it's a joy to be so with someone. Yes, mm-hmm. they should bring happiness, um, and the and in this context, the rightful pleasure into your life, right? Um, but at the same time, you should be able to experience that by being able to be selfless for mm-hmm. that other individual and mm-hmm. put their interest. Because if you guys are both doing that actively, you'll find out that actually, oh wow, this relationship. I'm actually receiving just mm-hmm. as I'm giving at the same time in it as well. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'd love to hear from Caden too. Yeah, I mean, thoughts? I think you guys talked a lot about a thing. I just, coming from my perspective, I feel like everything you said, it, it, I think it makes sense. I think the biggest thing I've always told people is like, if you're going to be in a relationship, like you can't base it just off of what you want. Like you have mm-hmm. to base it off of like your your practice i mean the idea of courting is preparing to be married i'm not mm-hmm. saying that i'm at that stage right, where right, i can right. talk on marriage but like if for in order for me to marry my girlfriend i have to start first practice on how to do that correctly mm-hmm. and if that means that i avoid conversations i don't want to have if it mm-hmm. means that there's some things that i don't agree with her that we have some similarities mm-hmm. i mean after i mean we've been together for three years after the first year if we don't have a lot in common you should learn how to find things in common. Yep. And I know that's kind of where I was, I hadn't really brought it up, but that was kind of the thing I was pushing back on was yeah, like the yeah, idea yeah. that, yeah, like 80, 20, they could be 80% of everything that you need. Yeah. It shouldn't all just be the things that you guys are in common about. Facts. I think I it should be about 100%. the things that you, your values align. That should be the biggest thing for me is that yeah. that's what I wanted out of my relationship with somebody Dude. who, who wasn't like a personality that was the same as mine. God, if I had somebody who was the same personality <laughs> as me, but Terrible. yeah, my wife is not the same <laughs> personality as me is not anyway. Me. We are but opposite. Yeah, like yeah. the eighty should be the parts of you that you value. Mm-hmm. It should be the facts. things that you value. Facts, if I facts, if facts. I like a certain TV show and she doesn't, that's we fine. can't base we our find, entire relationship. Yeah. We gotta find a TV show. That yeah, we yeah. I, I I'm glad you pushed me on that <laughs> because I agree with you. I would say the best part about a relationship is creating those commonalities yeah. like we we both like these kind of movies we like these kind of tv shows we like doing this activity together um you kind of find those things you kind of create them together you have your individual things that you like the other person doesn't like you'll have things in common but along the way if if you're doing things right and, and you're working on yourself and each other and stuff like that yeah you're gonna create yeah that's the beauty of it is that you yeah create this new thing that wouldn't exist without the two of you being together. And I'm talking about yeah. a, I'm not talking about a baby. <laughs> I'm talking about a human. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think just like you said, I think Amen. you can't base. I mean, if you're gonna have, I mean, I am not married yet, but I I plan to eventually. I'm not gonna have my relationship when I'm married be based off of all the cool fun things that we did or the things that we liked or what mm-hmm. what her favorite TV show is and what my favorite mm-hmm. TV like. It's, and it's not also going to be a part of just of, oh, she does worship and I don't do worship, but I do this. Like, mm-hmm. that's going to be aspects of it. Right. But at the core value of it, what is it about her that I know when we're having difficulty, when we get married with all the negatives that come with it? What is the one thing that I'm going to hold a lot of what my relationship is off of? And what is God going to remind me of when I'm thinking of? Because, I mean, I'm going to be transparent. The amount of times that I've prayed to God, God, is this the person that I'm supposed to be with is like, I couldn't even tell you how many times. And I mean, she doesn't know this, but I've always preferenced her. Like, I don't ever know if this is supposed to work out, but God is going to be the one who shows it to me. So anytime we have a big fight or a big disagreement, (laughs) I'm like, God, are you sure? sure And in most cases he shows me. Yeah. (laughs) Like I think in most cases, like I see the things that are keeping me in the relationship like whether it's her humbleness or whether it's uh, her ability to forgive or her mm. ability to show grace, like that's shown when we're like when we're in the valley, once mm-hmm. you come up to the mountain, that's the thing that I see first. That's and cool. that's the thing that brings me back up to that mountain again. So I think kind of just what you had talked, you guys were talking about, like you shouldn't just chase after somebody because you're attracted to them mm-hmm. because that's what the culture tells you to do. Yeah. And 
I'm not going to make it Christian or anything, but in some way we're supposed to be countercultural. So I think, what does that look like? That's always been my question. Yeah. It's a good place to end. I think that is a great place to end. It makes me excited for like a future like marriage episodes. Yep, because there's a whole lot I was holding back. Yeah, there's on so one. much that like Hayden like set up. I'm like, well, I can't wait to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> so tune in. This is the series on relationships, dating, marriage, all this type of stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, please interact with us. Yep. Check out our Patreon. If you yes. are currently not a Patreon supporter, please we would really one. greatly appreciate as we enter into this new season, we would love to be able to bring some other people on Yeah, man. Um, and to be able to get better equipment to be able to mm-hmm. be able to do this more often. Um, but hopefully this is something of benefit and yeah. uh, value to That's your life. That's the main thing. Hopefully it benefited you guys. And you'll be moving location. Soon. Yeah. This yes. is the last episode that will be in this room. My wife and I are moving to a house and so uh yeah things will look different yep. still same old we'll be possibly content. at some other different yeah, locations it's, switching to, yeah, up man. now that we have some better equipment to be able to help yeah. us be able to Again, actually shout do out that. to the patrons and and caden thank you so much for yeah. being on here man you did your great. thing i'm really glad yep richie thanks for richie appreciate here, you shout out to you yep. rich and we'll see you guys in the next one man love y'all peace peace